Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we'll have a very quick look at the premium American commander that uh, you can get out of the commander crate at the moment. And this is one Thomas Kincaid. So we, I've, we've already talked in the past about the German and the British premium commander. And uh, this one now is an American edition. I know that there was an original batch of premium commanders that I completely missed and I'm totally not sure which ones they were but if anyone has them please leave me a note because I'd be really curious. So Mr. Kincaid here, what is he good for? One thing that I pointed out in my last premium commander video was that the sixth sense skill or whatever it was called that showed you when you were being targeted by someone else was actually really really useful. And both the British and the German commander had this. The American commander here does not have it. So let's go through and let's see what he has as specials. He's got the battlefield support skill in the second slot, which means that in order to use that, you actually have to sacrifice the torpedo alert. But he's very, very specialized towards American cruisers. So especially American light cruisers, the new light cruiser line, because the battlefield support actually gives you both sonar and radar, whereas the original, uh, the uh, the, ori the original I think just gives um, sonar and air defense, but not necessarily radar or something in, in that line. I'm not hundred percent sure. The next one is the high alert. So instead of I think fifteen percent, we get twenty percent damage control kit cooldown time. I am not 100% sure how this applies to American light cruisers. Probably you'd be expected to be set on fire. Not really a thing. I don't know. But uh, th this is definitely a ship skill. I personally would have preferred the artillery maintenance. But again, that's that's the, the premium skill. Now the next one makes a lot more sense. The uh, inc improved air defense expert. So it... Uh, increases the duration by 25 and decreases the, uh, the cooldown by 50%. This together with the battlefield support means that we can actually have pretty much all the time uh, anti-air setups. Given that carriers are not always there, true, but still this looks like a, like a heavy focus on anti-air. The next uh, premium skill or special skill is in the generalist. So this heals a bit more. The normal generalist only recovers 1% and I think 15 or 20% fire and flooding resistance, 25 maybe. This gives 33% fire and flooding resistance for damage control and it restores 2% of hit points. So that's not a bad thing to have. The next one is the extinguisher. So again, they're, they're, they're coming down heavy on the fire damage. And, and this, this confuses me a little bit, because I don't see fire as the primary enemy of, of uh, American cruisers. Maybe they do this in case you don't want to put him on a cruiser, but you actually want to put him on a battleship. So if you're, if you're planning to go for a high-tier battleship, maybe that would make sense. But then again, the next premium skill is the IFAG shell, and that definitely screams cruiser. So, I don't know, maybe the idea was that um, if you're in, say, a Des Moines and you're getting under intense HE spammer attack, or maybe they're thinking that, well, high tier, high -tier cruisers would be good if they'd be fireproof. It goes in the general theme with American ships having their fire resistance being buffed. Anyway, this is a very, very powerful skill because it gives... 22.5% um, HE shell penetration. Now, I'm actually not sure what the regular is, so let's quickly check that with another American commander. Uh, let's just look at the Des Moines and see what the... So that's, instead of 15, we get 22% penetration. Uh, that sounds like a lot. I can't actually say what the impact is in practice, because I haven't, I haven't, on a, I, I have on no single commander, I have actually unlocked this skill yet. So, <laughs> I'm curious, but um, if this means that we get more full penetrations on high explosive at high tiers, then in something like a Worcester, oh dear. <laughs> uh, 
that would be that would be brutal. Even in a Des Moines, that would be pretty badass. So he's definitely uh, the the sonar uh, the sonar uh, sonar battlefield support ticks a little bit of a box for the for the light cruisers, but the anti air in general works for something like the Des Moines or the heavy cruiser line totally as well. So he's very very suitable as an improved American cruiser captain and um, especially if you make it up to to the higher tiers. Now I find it a bit of a shame that he doesn't have the um, that he doesn't have the the battlefield f focusing skill but I see why because that was on slot 4 and in slot 4 is the air defense expert which is something that you really really want on uh, on American cruisers. So well, they could have put it on slot 5 for all I care but well they decided not to. So just be aware that um, if you want to get a premium commander and um, you were looking forward to having that spe specific skill, it's not going to be there for Mr. Kincaid here. But regardless, uh, since he's here and I put him, <laughs> I put him straight to the Gulag <laughs> in the Brooklyn. Actually, actually, I have to take that back. I was very critical of the Brooklyn in the beginning. And um, I'm starting to do better with her, I, especially against battleships, if played in the support role correctly. She can actually do a fair amount of damage. You have to kite a hell of a lot more than you have to in, an, in a heavy cruiser because you can't get enough guns pointing forwards. But if you do that effectively and use the high fire axe, she can work. She can actually work quite well. And obviously, with the with the sonar as a destroyer shredder, she can do that as well. So let's play around in Brooklyn, just to round the video off, and not just be talking about captains. But actually, but uh, well, there's nothing special to show. But um, I'll show you anyway what it looks like on the Brooklyn. Okay, it's rather quiet on the server at the moment, so fair amount of bots here. We have Nuremberg, Fubuki, and Colorado on the enemy team, and plenty of bots we can burn down. We're not extinguishing, so. If we do ridiculous, if we rack out ridiculous amount of fire damage, that's because of bots. But let's do this. Um, we're playing Big Race, which is um, an unusual map on a tier seven. This is usually a lower tier, like a four or five maybe map. Anyway, uh, we're probably going A, and I'm not even gonna bother with the armor piercing. What do we have? Fubuki, double Fubuki. One of them a bot. Uh, well, let's just stick with the high explosive because we're gonna see the battleships first. Uh, that's a bot DD, so I'm just gonna head over to A. So there are a lot of small islands that I can use for cover. And um, just do we have a, where's our there's a Leander on our team? Who else do we have? There's a Gneisenau somewhere. He's probably on the other flank. So oh, he can look after himself. Gneisenau is a good ship. Even though she's a bit tricky to play. Okay. Uh, someone's running hydro. Oh, that's Ignite. Oh, there the, there's Ignite now. Why are you running your Hydro? There's nothing to see here. Oh, that's the Fubuki. Okay. You're running your Hydro, so... Well, that should be almost out, so I'm gonna switch mine on. Here come the Fubuki Torps. Yeah, yeah, I know. Enemy torpedo spotted. I do not need the 15... Uh, the 15% 15 increased torpedo spotting to know that there were torpedoes coming. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, Fubuki's gotten away, but we've got um, other things to shoot at for the meantime. Uh, that's just a bot. Let's not rush ahead of ourselves here, because we don't want to be... So, the Fubuki's getting away, and that's okay. Oh, there he is again. I was about to say, why are you spotted? How did you get spotted? Okay then. Yeah. Some battleships that might get us attention. So let's see if we can set the bots on fire first. And then we get to the Fubuki again. We'll just vary our out. We'll just vary our speed. Yeah, there come the Fubuki torps. I know. I've seen those coming a mile away. So Fubuki still alive? Uh, probably is still alive. That's okay. We'll deal with him eventually. Uh, bot games often turn into all-out brawls, and this one's not an exception. I would not be broadsiding enemy battleships like this if this wasn't a bot game. 
But um, Fubuki doesn't actually do anyone any harm because he's just kind of sailing around there in the back. And um, is he in range? Yes, he is. He's turning in. Okay, I'm gonna drop the speed out again just in case he dropped torps. Okay. Come on. There you go. My secondary is over here. Up. Oh, yep. It's quite a bit quicker than I thought. Or the shells just take a little bit longer than I thought. Let's just have the sonar up. Yeah, I don't know what you thought was gonna happen. But, um. What? He's still alive! Don't bother. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can stop that from happening. Still alive! Okay, I'm I'm almost switching over to the armor piercing. <laughs> I'm not gonna be having with that guy getting away. Now there should be torpedoes coming my way, so I'm gonna turn those in. And there's a Colorado left. But I want that Fubuki killed. Where did you go? Where did you go, you little rascal? Did you go behind that island over there? He cannot he have he has to be almost on no health. I haven't looked I thought he I thought I actually got him already. But somehow he's still alive. Where are you? I'm spotted, so that means he can't see me. So just make sure my speed a bit around. Slow down a bit. Speed up a bit again. And just generally vary my course. He's gotta be behind this island, right? He didn't go wide. He must be hanging out behind the island somewhere there. I have no idea where he is. I'm gonna switch back to the high explosive then. And see if we can still set some fires over there. Oh, there he is. Hello. Okay. Nope. The Fuso got him. <laughs> okay, and Ignizer now is in a is in a close up fight with the Colorado, which means that I can just open up from here freely and uh, just keep the fire up on the Colorado. So it's kind of busy. The Ignizer now doesn't look too great. So, let's see if we can be of a bit of help here. Just keep our distance and keep raining high explosive. And you see with the, uh, with the sheer amount of, uh, of high explosive we can dish out, uh, something's, even something's gonna stick and at some point, oh, nice now gets him, that's the torps in, well done. Uh, armor piercing out, cause that's just the cruiser left. Oh, we only have 10 seconds left. Uh, can we get a shot at the Nuremberg? It's probably too sh it's probably not enough lead. He looks like he's going very slowly. Ah, uh, we still got two hits up. Okay. We haven't sunk anything. Yeah, that can happen. <laughs> well done on the Gneisen now. Good job there. So, yeah, what have we seen? Uh, sonar. Sonar worked really well. And uh, we have one additional sonar charge, and we had um, we had the uh, did we get the improved cool did we get any improved cooldowns? No, he actually doesn't get. He, he, we just get the uh, uh, the one additional charge, so that is quite useful. And uh, sacrificing the torpedo alert for it is not too bad, especially if you you know if you know if you can see to, if you know that torpedoes are coming. Right? So if you see a if you see the destroyer like the Fubuki coming in you know that they're going to be torpedoes. So just point your nose towards them and <laughs> sail right between them. Uh, and yeah, you can use your sonar to spot them earlier. Other than that, uh, we haven't played against the carrier, so meh. But um, I'm, I'm going to keep him. And since, I mean, we, we haven't really talked about that, but since uh, two more ships came out in this line, and we now not, not just have the Cleveland to look forward to, but also the Seattle and the Worcester. This thing <laughs> looks uh, fun. So imagine you get the Air Defense Alert 3 with the improved Air Defense skill, plus you get another charge of sonar and radar. 
on this thing and she has she has 1250 millimeter guns with a 4.8 second reload time and here look five percent chance of setting fire and actually we didn't do we didn't do too badly in the brooklyn um i i'm liking this and uh i think having having the worcester at tier 10 i mean of course that she doesn't have torpedoes she doesn't have smoke but um she is a she doesn't even have secondaries i think does she no no she literally just consists of a lot of main guns <laughs> um so at least you don't need to think about what you're doing and ouch on that have you seen the range on these things 4.2 kilometer on the long on on the uh, large caliber three kilometer uh, on the small caliber similar to what the des moines has um usually you just get like 1.5 or so and a nine kilometer surface detection which isn't terrible as well holy hell <laughs> i want one of those <laughs> so yeah that's what i keep um that's what I keep Mr. Kincaid here around for, so we can put him in a Worcester eventually. And we'll get there because I'm starting to enjoy the Brooklyn quite a bit. And I've had some really good games in her, so uh, that's that. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks everybody for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Bye!